All right, everybody. Welcome back to Chew on This. We're done with our introduction to the book, and now I think we're actually going to start the first chapter. So if you could go to page 13. Page 13 at the top has a guy in a funny hat, and at the top it says, The Pioneers. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind is this. Um, pioneers, usually when you use the word at school, like in social studies, usually it means people like this people who traveled uh, west on in covered wagons or hand carts and so those that's what we usually think of when we think of the word pioneer now obviously this guy does not look like those individuals and so the pioneers the word pioneer is going to mean something different in this book and I think when your questions in like the second part of these uh, in the second part of this chapter something asks about that so please keep that in mind all right with that please follow along in your own book, I will read up here and tell you some things to mark. So please do those, but make sure you're following along in your own book on page 13. All right, here we go. Picture of the funny guy says, Hamburger Charlie. Big T. The story of fast food begins in October 1885 near the small town of Seymour, Wisconsin. So our setting for this story that's going to take place is in Wisconsin. That's right, up north. A friendly and outgoing 15-year-old boy named Charlie Negreen was driving his family's ox cart down a dirt road amid wide open fields. Oh, there's a cool word, amid. Let's underline that. Amid means what? Let's cover it up with our finger and try and figure it out. He was driving his family's ox cart down a dirt road, blank, wide open fields. So another word for amid could be what? Among, within, something like that. So amid means within something. Charlie was going to the Outgamy County's first annual fair. Now, annual meaning it's going to happen every year after that, right? Where he wanted to earn some extra money selling meatballs. Now, you pause right there. Good idea or bad idea? To go to the fair and say, I want to make some money. Good idea. How do you think selling meatballs at a fair is going to go? So this is how it goes. What happened next was the unlikely origin, circle that word and we'll come back to it, the unlikely origin of a delicious sandwich that would one day change the world. Now, I interrupted you a bunch there. Why don't you go back and reread that paragraph on your own and then hit play again. So right now, hit pause, reread that paragraph. All right. Now, origin, the word origin is one of your questions on your study guide. As Charlie sold meatballs at the fair, he noticed that customers had trouble eating them and strolling at the same time. So they're not just walking, they're strolling. Good word choice there. People were impatient. They wanted to visit Mr. John Bull's, next page, popular beehives encased in glass to see the fancy new harvesting machines and to enjoy all the other thrilling attractions at the fair. So you can get a sense that this is a very old school fair where the coolest attractions are the beehives, the harvesting machines, and so on and so forth. Ready? They didn't want to waste time eating meatballs. Charlie suddenly had an idea. If he squashed the meatballs and put them between two slices of bread, people could walk and eat. And so Charlie invented the hamburger. Now this paragraph here that we just read, I believe you have a question about what type of text structure it is on your study guide. So don't forget that one. Okay? Now, next paragraph. German immigrants lived in Charlie's hometown of Hortonville, Wisconsin, and he later claimed that the new sandwich was named after the German town of Hamburg, long famous for its ground beef steaks. Charlie continued selling burgers at the Outgamy County Fair until 1951. By then, he was an old man who liked to sing this rhyme while flipping burgers on the grill. <clears throat> Prepare yourself. Here I go. Hamburgers, hamburgers, hamburgers hot. Onions in the middle, pickle on top. Make your lips go flippity flop. Now, I don't know what tune he sang that to, but the next line says, Charlie had not only invented the hamburger, but also had composed one of the first advertising jingles for it. Might underline the word jingle there. Now, we've talked about jingles in this class and in other classes you probably have as well. You remember the importance of jingles, to get a product stuck in somebody's head or to be catchy. Now, I'm going to get, tell you a quick story, Chandler's story time. When I was uh, living and working in Brazil, when you'd go and get on the subway or get on the bus, there were all these people who, would ha who were vendors. They would have stuff out to sell, like candy, sandwiches, and so on and so forth. And there was this one guy we used to always watch. He was selling halls. You know halls? Halls, like the cough drops. And so you think, well, why would anybody sell cough drops? There's no way he's going to be able to sell this. And sure enough, guess what? He had a jingle, and it went something like this. He said it in Portuguese, and I don't know if it translates to English, but this is what he'd say in English. He said, I don't know how to sing, and I don't know how to dance, but I know how to bark. And then he'd go, 
ho, ho, hauls. And we just thought that was so clever. And it was amazing to see how many people would buy his hauls, his product, just because they liked his jingle. All right, so let's be back at the bottom of 14 now. It says, A number of other cities, including New Haven, Connecticut, Akron, Ohio, and Hamburg, New York, now claim to be the true birthplace of America's favorite sandwich. So you can see different people all think that they invented the hamburger. Now, very bottom of the page says, but the residents of Seymour, Wisconsin will have none of, next page, that. The signs that welcome people into Seymour let everybody know they're entering the home of the hamburger. And every August, the town has a big parade in honor of Hamburger Charlie. Now, the next section you can see is going to do a good job to get your attention. The heading says, Killer Burgers. Pretty catchy. This author does a really good job of using these catchphrases or these subheadings to really get your attention. So here we go, Killer Burgers. Despite Charlie's best efforts, burgers didn't become America's national dish overnight. For a long time after that, 1885 Outgamy County Fair, hamburger meat, wa hamburger meat had a bad reputation. Many people assumed that ground beef was dirty. According to one historian during the early 1900s, the hamburger was considered, a, quote, a food for the poor, unquote polluted and unsafe to eat. Restaurants generally didn't sell them. Burgers were served at lunch carts parked near factories and circuses and carnivals. It was widely believed that ground beef was made from rotten old meat full of chemical preservatives. The hamburger habit is just about as safe, one food critic warned, as getting meat out of a garbage can. Now there's a powerful simile where they compare what two things. Let's take a look at that one more time. Go back and read that again. The hamburger habit is just about as safe, one food critic warned, as getting meat out of the garbage can. What do you think is being compared? That's right, eating hamburgers to getting meat out of your garbage can. So you can tell what sort of comparison they're saying. Both of those are disgusting in this time when they're talking about. Now, the hamburger's reputation wasn't helped when murderers started using ground beef to kill people. In 1910, Alexander J. Moody, a wealthy baker from Chicago, died after somebody put poison in his burger. The police were never able to solve the case. One year later, a Chicago pie maker was poisoned the same way. Similar murder stories appeared in newspapers. Turn the page. Next part of words there. Across the United States, ground beef seemed like the perfect food in which to hide a deadly poison. And above it, you can see this uh, alleged newspaper clipping from an actual newspaper about people who were killed by hamburger. Now folks, that's as far as I'm gonna read to you. Remember, you do have a study guide that goes with this. We're at the bottom of page 16, and it's your job to read from pages 16 all the way to 24, okay, 24. And by 24, you have to read the bottom of 24, and then, you know, up at the top of 25, but not all of 25. So again, your job now is to read where we stopped, page 16, all the way to the middle of page 25. And with that, enjoy chew on this.